Meet Gerald Blanchard. He's an ordinary guy who has a pretty specific hobby. He loves stealing things, and he's been doing it from an early age. He's so good at it that he's earned the title of the world's most ingenious thief. Stealing is like art for him. Throughout his life, he not only stole millions of dollars and hundreds of luxury items, but also did it beautifully, audaciously, and with taste. His most famous robberies look like scenes from Hollywood movies, and his principles and beliefs make him a fascinating guy, not least because he never gave up the names of his partners in theft. He became famous worldwide, got a documentary about his life, and perhaps continues to pursue his favorite activity. Gerald was born in 1972 in Canada and moved to Nebraska with his mother and sister at an early age. He was a quiet and modest guy who loved to dismantle electronics. The boy could have become an inventor or an engineer, but his hobby took a non-standard form. An important step in starting the career of a thief was the conflict of his family with the bank that wanted to foreclose on the house he lived in. Perhaps at that moment, the thought appeared in his mind that if banks could withdraw money and property, he could do it too. As a teenager, Gerald stole things from stores, wallets, and jewelry from passers-by. And then he remembers his love for electronics. He started stealing household appliances, televisions, and video players and forged electronic receipts for these goods. By the age of 15, he was already an experienced thief. Confident in his impunity, he wanted to take on the real thing, robbing banks. However, the young thief's career ended quickly because the police caught him. Due to his young age, he spent only three months behind bars. And then, after gaining freedom, he started stealing again. By the age of 16, he had already had $100,000 stored in garbage bags and had bought a new house. The police caught him again, but he managed to escape. First, he crawled through the ceiling of the police station and got out. Another time, he got away from the chase by stealing a police car. Despite the risk of spending most of his life in prison, Gerald couldn't stop. He admitted that he felt a constant desire to steal something new. It was an obsession. It wasn't just about money, it was also this alluring feeling of adrenaline and adventure. In 1998, he committed the most famous and cinematic robbery. On an excursion to the Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna, he saw the diamond pearl from the 19th century called the CC Star, which belonged to Empress Elizabeth of Austria. He quietly opened a window in one of the palace rooms and, after the tour, bought a fake CC Star in a souvenir shop. According to his words, he flew up into the sky by plane at night and jumped with a parachute right over the palace. He landed on the roof, entered the building through the open window, took the jewelry, and left the fake one instead. Blanchard was sure the museum staff would notice the theft the next day, but the fake diamond lay there for three weeks without arousing suspicion. Blanchard said that he had used this trophy to participate in negotiations with the authorities and to apply it as a tool for future robberies. The police chased the famous thief for several years, but he managed to escape every time. The next high-profile case was the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce robbery in 2004. Blanchard came to his hometown to visit his family and heard from his grandmother that several city bank branches had merged into one large one where all the money would be stored. Of course, Blanchard was very interested in this news. He found out that the bank was just on the verge of opening and its employees hadn't installed any security and alarm systems yet. And soon they were going to bring ATMs there. Blanchard visited a hardware store to buy a vest and helmet. Wearing these clothes, he entered the closed bank and told the guard mm -hmm. that he worked as a builder. Gerald installed a cheap baby monitor with video surveillance inside the empty room. Through the device, he monitored when employees would bring filled ATMs. When that moment came, Blanchard broke into the bank again and hacked the lock. Then he took out half a million dollars from the ATMs. All this happened the day before the grand opening of the bank. The police were shocked by the arrogance and self-confidence of the robber but it was this robbery that led to Blanchard getting captured. A supermarket employee who worked near the bank noticed the car Blanchard was driving on the day of the robbery and informed the officers about it. The vehicle was registered in the name of Gerald Blanchard, 
so the police had him under surveillance. They had no direct proof of his guilt, so they could only observe. They tapped his phone and watched his every move. That's how they discovered his new frauds in other banks. During one of the robberies, police intercepted an incoming call to Blanchard's phone when he was crawling inside the ceiling into a room with ATMs in British Columbia. It seems that Gerald believed in his impunity and elusiveness so much that he came to the robbery as if it were an ordinary routine. Otherwise, how could he explain that he came to rob the bank in a car registered in his name? Gerald returned to Canada after his long journey to Egypt and Europe, where he made unsuccessful robbery attempts. In his homeland, the police arrested him. The famous thief was facing a prison sentence of 164 years, but he was able to get away with it this hmm. time, partly. The investigating authorities couldn't prove Blanchard was guilty of all the robberies. Still, he agreed to cooperate with the police and told them in detail about his looting in exchange for his sentence being shortened. He also declared that he wouldn't name any of his accomplices, and the police accepted this. After that, they found the famous CC Star diamond inside a wall of his grandmother's house. The jewel was returned, and the thief was sent to prison. Thanks to his cooperation, the sentence was reduced to eight years. His time behind bars was not so bad, because according to him, he was a superstar among prisoners. And by the way, don't trust this guy's words. Maybe he made it all up to get more attention. In 2012, he got his freedom and became famous worldwide. To earn money, he started using his most ingenious thief image. Gerald wrote books about his robberies, gave interviews, and starred in documentaries. He was getting good money, but still couldn't get rid of his inner desire to steal. In 2017, he was caught with an accomplice while stealing a gaming console in Toronto. And again, the police managed to find him with the help of a parked car registered in his name. This time, he escaped punishment and was released on bail. Some newspapers said he had started a new life in Vancouver, got a job as a drone operator, and became an expert on rare African cats. Yeah, quite unexpectedly. He used exotic cats in movies and clips for the fashion industry. Gerald may have stolen something else, but we don't know about it. A recent documentary based on his life has increased his popularity and brought him a lot of money. Still, this doesn't mean that Gerald will never return to stealing. Hopefully, he'll find the strength to never break the law again. In any case, the peak of his career has definitely passed. In today's world, with cameras on every corner, it's almost impossible to steal jewelry or rob banks. On the other hand, he's just stolen something valuable, a few minutes of your attention.